Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I'm Ahmad Adnan and now moving on to the next series or next video of this series. But before do that, I highly request you to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video with others so that they can also gear up in 2025 with KQL, which is real time intelligence. Now moving on to our next topic, which is basically this the lake house part. So lake house I have actually covered on other videos as well, like how you can configure that. Hope you are also aware of that. But there are certain latest features which I'm going to talk specifically on this video here. So once I logged in here, I am into my login in Power BI service and if I'm in fabric portal. And then I just logged in here to my lake hall, which is LH machine 01. And if I log in here, I can see these are multiple files here and also the Delta tables here. Now, as usual, we can just click on this icon. Let me just zoom in here on 25. Yeah, this should be fine. So if I click on this one, I can just click on upload files and I can also create uh, upload folders as well. So in order to upload a file, you can just click on upload files here and then click on these raw files and pick your any of your files and then click on open. So once you do so, this is going to load the data into the lake house. And from there you can take it further. So you can also create multiple folders here. You can just click here and then add new subfolders. We can add folders. And inside of that, I added here a few of the files, which is the CMMS logs here. And then we have the ERP data. And similarly, we have IoT sensors data here and also some of the master information. So these are the tables which I required in order to work on further processing. So from here itself, I can just click on this part and then load on tables and new or existing table. If you want to load this into a new table, I can just click on the new table. This is just an example I'm showing up here because we are not going to use the master data from here. We are going to use it from somewhere else, which I will talk about in future videos. So load into table. If I click on this one, this is going to open up a new window. I can just specify the schema here and the name of this table. And if the first column of this one refers, first row of this particular has a header, you can just tick out this option and then click on this option where it is a separator, which is, it is a colon, semicolon, hyphen or whatever it is. You can just specify that. But this is ideally it will pick up what is there in the file and then click on load. This is going to create a new delta tables into your table sections on the top here. So that is where we can manage to do that. So there are security features available in Fabric and specifically as you can see on the top, which is manage lake house data access. If you want to know more detail about that, I made many sessions on the other in-person event or virtual events. If you haven't seen that, then not an issue. If you need that, please let me know in the comment section below so that I can also add that video in my channel here. So it has to be kind of multiple communication between you and me so that it can be helpful for me so that I can also understand where I'm going towards here. So now we have this master machine data. So now you can see we have a machine master, that's a table name. And if I click on this one, I have this company ID, machine ID, that's the two information which is there. So it is loaded here. But if I right click on this area, so I have this rename option, delete option, view files, properties and refresh here. So if I just click on the view file, this is going to give me as uh, this is a delta table. So that's what it is actually storing the information. The parquet behind the scene, the storage option, it is showing up here on this part. And each and every transaction is going to store on the delta table. So whatever you are doing changes is going to store over here. And then we have an option about properties. When you click on this one, this gives some property values here. That's the name here. That's the type of manage here and the URL relative part and ABFS path here. So this can be helpful if you want to access it outside of fabric. If you want to use this one using ABFS path, you can directly use this one. So this is a useful feature where if you want to use the URL also, you can also use that. Now, the main purpose of this one is I want to show here. If I again right click or click on the three dot icon, it just have an option which is maintenance, right? So if I click on this one, it has given me here run maintenance command, optimize file size, run the delta table, optimize command in Spark to compact the and rewrite delta parquet files. And we also have other options. We'll talk about this one by one now. This is really an important thing because we are now using real time intelligence. We are going to bombard with lots of data. So even in future, if you want to do certain things to maintain this table that you have to do these kind of features. So what is optimize here? So basically optimize refers to let me quickly show my PPT here. All right. So what is optimized here? What it does? It combines many small files in delta tables into larger one, right? And improves query performance by reducing the number of files the system has to scan. So usually when the user queries some information from this table, data table, it actually need to scan all this delta small, small files. And then we need to read through that and then give us the information. So that can have an impact in the performance. 
So how this actually is split? So first we need to understand, right? So the reason is because whenever you are actually updating any record, it's actually creating those small, small files here. If you're deleting the file, if you're deleting a record, if you're adding a record, if you're updating a record, it actually creates all those small, small files behind the scene. And if you want to read that, then it has to combine all these things and then you give you the information. So that can have an impact in performance if the volume is uh, too many files. So when you're clicking on the optimize, it actually combines all these files, small files into a larger file and then stores into the behind the scene, which is in the Lakehouse. So when to use? Use after frequent write, updates or delete that creates many small files and ideal for tables that require that to read often. Right. So whenever you are querying this regularly, then you need to use this functionality. So key benefit, faster query execution, reduce the read overhead by minimizing the number of operations. So that's an advantage of that. So what is the command here? You just need to run optimize and then the table name in the Apache Spark notebook itself. So that made small files tables into the larger file. So what is the configuration behind that? That is default for now. So if something is required, something we can customize that, I will also let you know in the future. If it is already available, please let me know in the comment section below that if this feature is already available so that we can also learn together. So this is the optimized part. So hope you are aware of that. So combining large, many files into one larger file. So that's an idea about this one. Now moving on to the next one, which is basically um, this one. Apply a VP order to maximize speed info. This actually gives us the clear information about what is the use of that. But if I look into my PowerPoint here, so what it does, it reorders data within files for better clustering based on a specific column here. So you can specify the column name and then it can reorder those column in a specific manner so that it can read fast when you're reading that. Especially useful for multi-column filters or range bins queries here. So if you're doing the multiple column filters on your query execution, then this can be helpful if you want to store in that manner. So when to use? When Use when queries often filter data on multiple columns, example where dates between this and this and region equal to this. For applying this kind of filters on your query, then you need to use reorder storing of this particular, you need to run this one in your table. And best for high volume data tables with, with selective queries here. So if you have volume is large and if you want to select particular thing, then it's uh, for them, you can use this reorder option. And what are the key benefits here? Speed up queries by minimizing the amount of data scanned within the file because it's stored in an order so that we can easily scan those information here. And enhance performance for range and multi-column features. So multi-column filters here. So if you are using a multiple column filter like we have used here, so that can be helpful for you. So how you can use that? Optimize, it's using the optimize as well as the v-order at the same time. So optimize table name and then v-order, that's the function by specify the column name. Like you want to use it by machine ID, if you want to use it by uh, the transactions, the column, whatever you want, you can specify those columns here. So this optimize the data layout for a specified columns here. So that's amazing. Now the next part here is remove unreferenced file. So run the Delta Lake vacuum command in Spark to remove files that are no longer referenced and that are older than retention threshold you set below. So run vacuum command using threshold retention of seven days. So what does this mean actually? We are not deleting any data, but how this is still going to happen? So for that, let's have a look into my PPT. So what it does? So deletes old unreferenced file from a delta table to save storage space. And the cleans up data no longer needed after update or delete. So is it going to delete our data? No, it is not actually. So when to use this one? So I will tell you about that. Uh, how to remove files? I mean, use to remove files that are no longer needed after the retention period default is seven days. So helps maintain storage efficiency for tables with high data turn here. And key benefit. So free up space, free up storage by permanently deleting unnecessary files keeps delta tables lightweight and efficient. So important note, files removed by vacuum are no longer available for time travel and rollback. This is a key point. So if you are using a regular transactional table and you want to maintain this time travel then you know, don't need to do this one but this can increase the size of the table you need to pay for additional storage cost and all of those things but for this kind of thing which is the real time data which you are talking about you don't need to maintain the history right it's going to just send the signals and whatever it is going to present over there so you don't need to maintain any kind of versions history for that so you can just try to reduce this file it can be like seven days by default, I think vacuum table retains seven days. This removes old files older than seven days. So the default it shows here like seven days because sometimes the read, write, delete option is happening behind the scene if the volume is too big. So it is good to keep at least for seven days as a default option so that it can take the data if something required from this um, history rollback data itself. But if you are okay with the seven days data, then what will happen to this one is after seven days, this is going to delete all this data 
which is not going to reference here. So it will not have any Western history. So you cannot able to go back after seven days. But that is okay for you in this real time situation case. But this highly recommend you to analyze your transaction business requirement based on that you need to take a call out of it. So that's the useful feature of the vacuum here. So you need to click on all of these things and then click on run if you want to do that. For example, if I click on the run here, it is saying message optimizing same entry log table in Leco. This may take few minutes. So based on the data volume, size of the structure of the table, it will take some time in order to generate this one. So this is all about, I just want to highlight you about these three maintenance features in Lake House that you need to aware of if you are working on your real business use case here. I hope this you find this video helpful. If you like this video, just hit the big thumbs up button. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notification on your devices. Share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any queries and feedback, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.